Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to see you all here in worship uh, this morning. Welcome goes especially at first morning to all our guests. There are many here today, some of whom I met before, know them, some are totally new. We are so happy you are here in worship with us, and we truly pray that this time, this special service, it will be an opportunity for all of you to grow in faith and be renewed and uh, find uh, maybe a new source of hope that you need just for you today. And if you're able. The God who speaks comfort to us calls us here. The God who addresses us with tenderness leads us here. The God who guides us with gentleness cares for us here. We come to you to meet the Lord. We come to ready ourselves for the transformation of our lives. For the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it. That, was, that is for the confirmation. Ready. Dear Franklin, you are here. Come uh, to uh, and desire to receive holy baptism. We have prayed that God, we prayed together actually just five minutes ago. We have been prayed through our Lord Jesus Christ that would grant and receive you all the gifts that you need and release you for all the rough things that are part of your life. We ask God to sanctify you with the Holy Spirit and give you the kingdom of heaven and the everlasting life. Here's a few questions for you. Do you truly and earnestly repent of your sin and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? If so, you may answer, I do. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? If so, you may answer, I do. I do. Do you desire to be baptized in this faith? If so, you may answer, I do. I do. Will you then obediently keep God's holy and will and commandments and walk in the same way all the days of your life? I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Franklin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you. Amen. And now, dear friends, please join me in the uh, congregational response. Brethren of household of faith, I commend to your love and care, Franklin who um, with this day recognized as a member of the family of God, will you endeavor so to live that he may grow in the knowledge of God, Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join me. We promise to give Franklin our support as he walks in the pathways of Christ. We offer ourselves also as ones who take Franklin into our love our prayers and our daily lives, striving to build a community rich in the Spirit of God, we to nurture Him. Amen. I'll give you a hug. I know you don't like it, but I do. Thank you. Many 
It is a tradition for the church to present third graders a Bible to help start them on their journey of faith. And I know Maura is a fourth grader, but we wanted to make sure she has one as well. So with this Bible, it, it, we learn the Word of God, and we want to make sure that th with this gift that you are growing and expanding the Word of God in your faith and your spiritual growth. Isley, please present, accept this gift from us to help you with, no pun intended, the next chapter of your growth in your spirituality, and hopefully you'll keep it forever and treasure it. Maura, please accept this gift of your Bible and keep it forever and use it to help with your journey in your spirituality as well. Can I just bless you all? Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this Bible especially bless those who are receiving it today. Help them uh, to make uh, uh, your word uh, a path of life. Help them uh, to read it in time of struggles, in pain, in time of joy to learn how to praise you, and in time when they look for healing, looking for hope. We ask you to walk with them every day of their life and bless them dearly in your name we pray. Amen. Should we give them a round of applause? Thank you. Together in singing down to the river to pray. The words will be on the screen. As I went Let's go down. 
Popcorn. No. What is it? What are we supposed to call? A stuffed animal. Stuffed animal. What is this? Can you see it from there? Can you see what she has? You can just say it loud. Blanket. Blanket. How do oh, I'll do it. Okay. How does how do these two things make you guys feel? Do you want to touch it? <laughs> you are a cool dude. Anybody wants to touch this? Do you want to touch it? You don't want to you don't want to touch. There we are. What's that, Frank? How makes you feel, Franklin? Happy. Anybody else wanted to get a little squeeze to that big teddy bear? Um, I think it makes me feel warm on the inside. I don't know. Anybody else want to? I tell you, it's a magic teddy bear. Anybody wants to give it a try? Yeah. Do you want to squeeze it? It makes me happy. Oh. What about the blanket? What about the blanket? How does the blanket make you guys feel? Probably they have to try. Do you want to try to put like it on it? yourself? Yeah. That always helps. Warm. Warm. The blanket makes me feel safe. I don't know. It just does. I don't know why. It just does. Any, any idea? Are they make, make, do you have a blankie? Do you have a special blankie? Yeah? What the, what the makes you feel? It makes me happy and good. And that's the answer, but uh, all together. Anybody over there who wants to share anything about how blanket makes you feel? You all good? Okay, go. Do blankets and squishmallows make you guys feel comfortable and safe? So, like John says, comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. So, like the blanket and the stuffed animals, God helps you feel comfortable, right? I have a little surprise. Do you want to pray first? Because if you take the surprise out now, there's no way to bring it back yeah. to a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> just, just previous experience, just go, right, if you want let's to pray. pray. Let's hold hands. Can you all connect it with each other? Here, with my pinky. <clears throat> Are you all connected? Air connect. Lord, your eyes are on us. <laughs> your comfort gives us a sense of hope. Help us feel comfortable in your arms. Amen. Amen. All right, let's see the surprise. Marshmallow, you think that's what the surprise is? Wow. Ooh, this is not gonna go easy. I'm gonna, how about if we just uh, pass it on? We'll pass that on, do you like this guy? What about this? Look at this is a pinky baby. Do you like this white guy? Look at the, I this, got the star. this is a say try me. Oh, this is a prayer. Anybody wants the prayer bear? Yeah. Do you all have one? Do you all want one? You all want, do you want one for your brother? This is, I think he will like this guy. One for Damien? Yeah. All right, so anyone who will other, that's good sister. Okay, so the, uh, Mary Jo is there waiting for you if you wanna go in the back end. Otherwise, you can choose to stay here and see the rest of the server, whatever you like. But they're gonna bring you back when it's time for confirmation anyway. Are you all with me? They're all discussing about who got word. I know, I know that. Okay, well, you can go with God. <laughs> we are done with children time. You can go and stay with your parents or go with Mary Jo. Thank you very much, Abby.
Good morning. Before we lose it again. I will be reading the scripture from Isaiah 40, 1 through 2, 29 through 312, Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, and John 14, 1, 19 through 21, and 26 through 27. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not be faint. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, for who comforts us in all of our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me. I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. But the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. May God bless the reading and the receiving of uh, uh, the word today. So dear Franklin, dear Abigail and Savannah, in a few minutes uh, you will uh, make your public confession of faith and you will become a fully member of this Christian uh, community of faith. As I mentioned before, this is your big first uh, personal decision. Of course, you've been part of many decisions in your life, but this is really a life-changing decision. And my prayer, my hope is that this decision will inform uh, all many decisions in the past. It will be a source of inspiration uh, for you. And when you, sooner than you think, you will need to start making big decisions about right and wrong decision about relationship, decision about school, about future, about work. This today is foundation of all the rest of your decision. And it's not by any chance that as uh, I spoke uh, uh, with them and we prepared together the service, we all three of them, they uh, chose the word comfort as the main theme of this day. The main theme of their confirmation theme that speak to them directly about their relationship with God. This work came out of, out of a, uh, another one of our good conversation. You know, we had, I don't know if you agree, but at least that's my take. We had many, many good conversation through our uh, confirmation process. And uh, it was uh, so cool to see how they open up and start to trust each other and be also very vulnerable by sharing very personal story, personal things, some really hard things, some very painful things, some really funny things. And uh, as we prepare, we were preparing for today, they it seems like uh, you know when you see this moment when all the pieces are coming together just by the Holy Spirit, that's exactly what happened. No matter what they were saying, it seems like everything was going toward this big idea of comfort. You know, we study the Bible, we uh, study church history, we study theology, the meaning of worship, a Christian season, yet by far the best, for me at least, uh, was our heart-to-heart -heart conversation that we had throughout this process. 
And uh, uh, I think in the midst of what some of you experienced this year, pretty devastating loss and uh, very difficult, uh, difficult, uh, uh, deep grief, much bigger than what anyone in your life should ever experience. I think uh, you were so open about it and so ready to share with each other and to trust God through this. You know, often when I prepare a, a group of youth uh, to this time, uh, I think uh, they still have a quite an abs abstract idea about what God is and what faith is, but that was not the case for you. Because of the experience that you had, because of the grief that you personally uh, had to experience, you knew exactly what meant to say, I found comfort in God. It was not abstract. It was not unclear. It was very, very clear. And in God, you found source of healing and a hope bigger than you throughout this year. You found there that is a place to go even in the darkest moment. In that comfort, you can find safety and also a bigger purpose for yourself, for your life, for your future. There you find a place to vent, and that's your words. I love that you think that you can just go to God and vent your gut out. That is one of the best way to have a relationship with God, the most authentic and real. That's what lots of people in the Bible did. They just went out and vent their heart out. In uh, comfort of God, you find that also a great deal of acceptance and unconditional love and, and such a deep sense of assurance. It was also very wonderful to hear you saying that the same sense of comfort you found in this congregation. At one point, one of you said, when I walk around the church, I feel like I'm in my living room, which is a very good image of what a church should be. It's a family, it's a spiritual family to feel safe and completely accepted. It's a place of comfort where we care for each other, we pray and support each other. And uh, as I was uh, uh, listening and explaining your faith and your relationship with God, I was uh, uh, deeply moved by recognizing how much you've been growing in faith and uh, how faith has become a huge anchor in your life through the storms that you already had, the storms that you went through. And here's the news, nobody, no one will ever take that anchor away from you, no matter what's gonna happen in life. That is probably one of the best news that I'm gonna give to you and everybody else today. Now please know that confirmation was not all about serious conversation and heavy duty <laughs> talking and topics. We did a lot of laughing, actually more than, we did a lot of laughing, but we did also a lot of running through the church. Not me, I don't really run that great anymore, but they were running. We run looking for Bible books and we run just because we needed to run and we laugh a lot, we uh, made fun of each other. And also, let's not forget we ate. Uh, which is always an important part of uh, any process of church. We ate a lot of pizza and sandwiches. And if you think about it, that is also very much comfort, right? Body and spirit comfort, and uh, as well as it is fun and laughter are also part of our comfort. I think uh, that God's comfort is also food and eating and laughing. That is comfort for our souls, not just for our body. Well, uh, the other day, I just ran into a little video that I want to share with you that really I thought was a great image of comfort. Just those little two boys. Let's take a look. The 
This is for me, it's a great image of what God comfort does to us. He, we can always, always lean on him. Just like this little boy, such a little guy that has the uh, sense to an awareness to realize that his little friend is just falling asleep and he's letting uh, be on him. And, and this little boy can fall asleep because he can trust this friend completely. He knows he can lean on him, he can be safe. This is, in a way, what God does to us all the time and help us to even be relaxed in the midst of anxieties. Even when there is stress and exhaustion, despair and fear, we can find that good shoulder that is gonna lead us toward him and uh, help us to uh, be ourselves. Now in the scripture, you heard Samana reading some of the beautiful scripture about comfort. There are many other scriptures that talk about comfort. It's a big word, comfort, in the scripture. Uh, we can find that, as you heard, Isaiah, she read from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah uh, uh, is called by God to bring comfort to the people of Israel after the most uh, devastating time of their history, when they were brought to exile after the destruction of uh, uh, Jerusalem, and uh, they lost everything. They got nothing, and they are in Babylon, and God called Isaiah to say, bring comfort to my people. That is my loved ones, bringing that back to uh, Israel, end their time of pain, and start their return to the land. Some of you might remember also uh, King David in one of the toughest times in his life, saying and confessing the, uh, his faith and the God of comfort by saying, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, they comfort me. And then, of course, Jesus came into uh, this world uh, to bring God's comfort in person to so many he comforted the weak, the desperate, the discouraged, the hungry, the ill, the outcast, those who were overlooked. He came and brought comfort and healing to the Samaritan woman, to Martha and Mary, to uh, the father who lost the child, uh, to the sinner that could not repent, to the leprosy, to those who uh, were considered trash in this world. And in the end of his life, when he was going to say goodbye to his friends, when he had to choose carefully what were the last words that he was going to say, he said to them, I'm not going to leave you alone. I will send you my comforter, the Holy Spirit. And that is going to be within you. It's going to be from now forever, always with you, no matter where you are, no matter what happened in your life. The Holy Spirit will always be with you. And the word comforter, it's always with us. You see the God of comfort entering our souls and live there forever. Again, this is the greatest promise for you today. Savannah, Abigail, and Franklin, but also for all of us, the Comforter is always with us throughout all the circumstances of life, especially in the midst of grief and loss, sadness, despair, and now always will be bringing rest and peace to us. Now, one of the big challenges that the three of you will, I'm sure, uh, face, like I face, like uh, all of us here face at one point or another, is that even though we all need comfort, all of us need comfort. Nobody can live without comfort. Uh, we often look for comfort in the wrong places. I don't know if you ever noticed, but many times we think that material stuff, belonging, will bring comfort. So let's buy another big couch, another bigger car, another bigger TV, another bigger bed. Let's have more and more and more because all this come with the promise of giving us all the comfort that we need in the world. Well, guess what? 
you pile more and more, and then you get rid of more and more, and you still feel like that stuff is going to give you comfort for a very short time, and then here you are. It's gone. Some of us uh, also look for comfort in all kind of addictions. All kind of addiction. From food on, many kind of problems that we have. So, and then initially we find that those things, those situations, uh, substances, or, or uh, the choice we make in life, they are indeed feeling that is going to give us comfort, make us feel good for a while. But guess what? Before we know, we become slave of uh, this source of comfort. And let me tell you, God is not a God that gives sl slavery. He's a God of freedom. Then there is that third and last source of comfort that we fall into at some time. It's what I call comfort zone. Do you know that? Comfort zone, uh, we love it. We sit in our couch and we know everything that is going to happen. Comfort zone gives us this sense of control over our lives. And we feel like no matter what it's going to be, I'm going to be in charge. And then, guess what? Something happened and boom, everything is out of the window. Comfort zone, it keeps you from becoming the person that God wants you to be. Because you are afraid of taking, taking chances. So we need to learn how to let go. That is not the kind of comfort that God gives to us. So dear Franklin, Savannah, and Abigail today, you are choosing to find your life in God's comfort, not another source of comfort. You will never be alone in dealing with pain. You will never be alone in dealing with choices. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes like everybody else, and then God is going to pick you up and take you back and give you another round and another round and another round. God of comfort will never abandon you. But here's the challenge that I have for the three of you. It's coming from uh, what Savannah read for us from uh, the Apostle Paul that was writing to the church in Corinth saying, Praise the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that, every time in the Bible you hear these two little words, so that, Ding, pay attention because it's about to say something really important. So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. The word comfort comes from the Latin com, that means with, together, and the word fortis, that means strength, strong. Interesting enough, the word comfort means getting strong together. Comfort like compassion, like companion. Start with the same word and have the same sense of, sense of community. What God is trying to tell us is those things need to be done together. And when I uh, give uh, comfort to somebody, guess what? I receive comfort back. Every time I let someone lean on me on my shoulder, physical shoulder or emotional, spiritual shoulder, in doing that, God will fill me, too, with comfort and will be uh, growing within me. So for all of you, as you keep going in your journey of faith, look around you. Look around at those in your life who are in need of comfort. Let them lean on you. Give them comfort. Let them rest in you and find peace in you. And every time you get out of your comfort zone, you take a risk and courage to do something different, you use compassion for someone, every time that you uh, support someone who's suffering, every time you hold someone who is in pain, the miracle of God comfort occurs again and again. Through you, comfort is going to reach out many others. Every time that you do that, Jesus comes into the world through you. So pass it on. Amen. Ready? Oh, you, you use the microphone? Yeah.
Well, then I can. Do you guys want to come a little closer that way? Oh, yeah, that too. If everybody can see you. Well, perfect. Dearly beloved, the church is of God and will be preserved to the end of time for the conduct of worship and the due administration of his word and sacraments, the maintenance of Christian fellowship and the discipline and edification of believers and the conversion of the world. All of every age and station stand in need of the means of grace, which is alone supplies. Abigail, Franklin, and Savannah, are about to be confirmed. They have received the sacrament of baptism and have been instructed in the teaching of the church and are now ready to profess publicly the faith in which they were baptized. Abigail, Savannah, Franklin, do you here in the presence of God and of this congregation renew the solemn promise and vow that you made or that was made in your name at your baptism? If so, you may answer, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and pledge your alliance to his kingdom? If so, you may answer, I do. I do. do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? I do. Do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to live in Christian life and always remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church? If so, you may answer, I do. Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and uphold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? If so, please answer, I will. And now, once again, we're all called to uh, respond together and make a commitment for these friends. I commend to you, to your love and care, Franklin, Abigail, and Savannah, whom with this day receive into membership in this congregation. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We rejoice to recognize you as members of Christ's Holy Church and bid you welcome to the Christian of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, and our gifts, and our service. Amen. Abigail, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Franklin, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace, and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Savannah, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace, and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a time for our offering. This is an opportunity for us at this time to share a gift with the, uh, the Ministry of Salem and uh, pray over and bless it so that they can reach out to those who are in need of comfort today. So let us enter in this time of offering.
and now it's time for uh, comfort food. And we stay in the theme, so there's a cake and cookies and drinks in the back for all of you. Help us to celebrate these kids and this day, special day. They will be outside and you will have opportunity uh, to talk to them, if so if you, you wish. And as we prepare to leave this place, may indeed the comfort of God be with you today, throughout the difficult times, in the midst of loss, but also when you have to make decision about what really counts in life. May the comfort of God lead you through life and may the Spirit of God be with you now and forever.